once again introduce Mr. Rolf Dirt for his second presentation. Rolf? Thank you. presentation with good news. This is the map of South America which shows the red spots are the dry areas and the green spots are rainy areas and the blue spots that are the high rainfall areas. And it's all dry so soybeans are not going to be produced too much in South America this year and you're going to sell your soybeans probably to a better price than, than you did in other, in other occasions. So at least it's a good news for you, but it's not so good for the South Americans. Anyhow, uh, let's go to the next part of my presentation. And uh, we treated this morning the benefits or the effects of no tillage on soil quality on three main aspects soil chemical physical and biological properties and we are going to continue now with crop sanitary aspects with other factors like fuel consumption mechanization and so on uh, the effect of no tillage on the environment and we will finish with some conclusion and some final remarks. So what's the influence of no tillage on crop, crop sanitary aspect? Biological pest control is increased, it's positive. Pests may increase or may be reduced depending on the specific pest, depending on the crop, depending on the year, but all in all, it's not more and not less in no tillage than in conventional tillage. So plus minus, it can be more, it can be less depending on what specific pest. Diseases, here we have a negative point. Generally, the crops are more liable to diseases because the diseases stay in the residue when it when the next crop comes, the residue residue stays on top, then we have more possibilities of uh, infection of the next crop. In weeds, it's more or less depending mainly on management. So if you manage with good crop rotation and cover crop, you crop well, it's going to be less. If you manage it badly with monoculture and and not so good practices, it may, may be more. Biological pest control is something that is not done so much over here, we don't talk so much over here, but in South America, it plays a role, you know, the biological pest control. Here we see a bug, that some farmers go there and go to the insecticide, and we have to eliminate this bug, but this, is, this bug is killing the caterpillar over here. And this is the main caterpillar that attacks soybean in South America. And uh, here we have pneumonia, a fungus that attacks the same caterpillar, Anticarsia gematalis. And here we have a virus. And in Brava, the equivalent to USDA in Brazil, has developed a powder that contains the virus that you put in your can and spray it the same as an insecticide and if you do it at the right time you control all your this very important pest in South America just biologically with this virus. And in this graph I'm showing the survival of this virus in an optimal situation compared to a habitus caro where you will be burying your, your virus with a tillage implement, you will be burying the virus, so it's not going to re-seed the next uh, 
season, while on no tillage you have the natural infection with baculovirus, so you have a lower quantity of these caterpillars in the next season. Some pests, as I said before, may decrease in tillage while others may increase. And aphids in general will decrease because aphids do not like the reflection of the light that goes into their eyes and they prefer to go to a field that has bare soil than to fly into a field that has uh, residues on top. Diseases like rust and fusarium may increase because rust is in the residue and as long as the residue stays on the ground, not being decomposed, this residue, when the raindrop hits the residue, the drop will, will splash back to the plant, take the fungus disease into the new germinating plant, infecting the plant immediately. That's why rust and other necrotrophic uh, funguses are very easily transmitted to the next crop. This slide shows the number of weeds of a specific weed, Brachiaria plantaginia, per square meter in soybeans under two tillage systems and three different crops. And you see that in wheat you have a low infestation in no tillage and a high infestation in conventional tillage and in oats the same thing, while in, when you have fallow, they are almost the same because um, the, this is the negative effect of the fallow. But this may be different with different weeds. This slide shows the weed infestation of the fallow and green manure cover crops in, in a, an experiment we did in Brazil years ago. In the left, you see the percentage of wheat seven days after cutting the cover crops. And on the left column, you have winter fallow, the highest incidence of weeds in, after winter fallow, while all the cover crops we used in that season reduced substantially the different, the different weeds. And we had no weeds at all after rapeseed and black oats. On the left, on the right side, excuse me, we see the number of weeds per square meter 58 days after cutting the, the cover crops. And uh, in the winter fallow crop, we have a high number of weeds present while all the cover crops have reduced substantially again for the weeds in that season. And in this slide, I'm showing the cost of weed control in crop rotation with short term green manure cover crops and in monoculture. Monoculture for us is anything where soybeans or any crop is repeated every year in the same place. And if we do double cropping and have soybean wheat, soybean wheat, we call this a monoculture because both crops are being repeated each year on the same fields. So we have two such situations. <coughs> the yellow column with crop rotation, the, the right column with monoculture, double cropping. And here we have maize, sun hemp, wheat, and soybean. We have 43 dollars per hectare to, for the wheat control, having this rotation of a year. And with herbicides in monoculture, soybean, wheat, soybean, soybean flour, wheat, soybean, we have a cost of $105 per hectare to control the weeds. That means the cost of production could be reduced in this case by $62 per hectare. Rotation with pasture phases and livestock integration increases diversity and improves soil health. What is the influence of no tillage on other factors? Let's see how fuel consumption is reduced. Mechanization, horsepower per hectare is reduced. Tractor horse per hectare is reduced. 
life of the tractor is increased. Positive traffic, trafficability of the fields is increased. Labor is reduced as positive. Yields are increased with time. And the economics and product, product profitability is increased. That means it's also positive. Monotelage. Let's look at this fact. Fuel consumption in terms of gallons per acre in red. Conventional tillage, and when I'm talking about conventional tillage, I mean plowing. It would be more wood plowing in the northern, northern hemisphere and disc plowing in the southern hemisphere because we have those sticky soils in South America where you cannot work with a moldboard plow because you have the soil sticks on the moldboard and you're not turning it well. So that's why in South America most people only use disc plows. Then we have the heavy disc carol that you know the action that has a lower fuel consumption and no-till has only 33%, one third of the fuel consumption of conventional tillage was the plow. Paraguay saved 80, 68 million liters. That means 13 million gallons of diesel valued at 87 million dollars on 2.4 million hectares of no tillage that were practiced in this country in 2008. As the United States has 10 times that amount of no tillage being practiced, in the United States you are saving 130 million gallons, gallons of fuel by using no tillage on that area. Tractor hours per acre, everybody knows this. Conventional tillage, 2.4 acre per hour, while in no tillage, you can do it in one hour. No tilling has reduced my machinery use in half. And this is are the words of a prominent no tiller that has done this for 20 years in Decatur, Illinois. And some of you know this fellow. It's Howard Buffett the millionaire farmer that is a farmer that cares for the soil and likes sustainability and that's why he turned into no tillage. On 64 million acres no till in the United States, tractor hours, our use is reduced by roughly 89 million hours. But on 100 million acres conventional till still practiced in the United States, tractor hours could be reduced by 140 million hours. So think a little bit about this number. American farmers are running with their tractors over the field, plowing the field, they could save 100. What can you do with 140 million hours? Isn't that incredible? <coughs> Life of a tractor, conventional tillage, a tractor will last eight to ten years, and now tillage, of course, it will last twice as much according to the numbers we have seen, 16 to 20 years. Necessary labor, conventional tillage high, no tillage low. And one of the problems of modern technology is that you are sitting too comfortably and too far away from the soil. No fatigue, no soil contact. So if it would be a bother to get off this track for once in a while and look at the soil, what's happening. And of course, if you would be plowing under these conditions, you would feel a little bit more how hard it is to plow the soil because no tillage reduces the drudgery of work, large energy, energy and time savings, and it frees up time for other income generating activities. Those 140 million, 140 million hours you could really use for other income generating activities instead of sitting on the track 
So there's a bit, a bit of on China. Tropic ability of fields, high and low. And this is a farmer in Brazil, Frank Dijkstra, perhaps some of you have heard about him. He's a prominent pioneer or tiller. He started in 1976, the first crop he harvested in 77. In soybeans, he was harvesting 30 bushels per acre. After 20 years of no tillage, he is, was harvesting 54 in 1997. He still has increased this year. And he has an 800 hectare farm, that means 2,000 acre farm. So that's not a small farm. Then he was harvesting on, when he started, 63 bushels of corn per hectare. Now he's harvesting, 20 years later, he is harvesting 127 bushels per acre. And the most interesting thing is that he could do this with 30% less fertilizer on corn and 50% less fertilizer on soy. Through no tillage, Brazil has doubled grain production in 14 years while cultivated air agro only by 10%. And that's interesting. And this time, no tillage started in 1772. It grew up through to uh, 1 million hectare after 20 years. But when it took this curve over here, really increasing, and this time, grain production doubled in Brazil not because you double the yield, because in some cases you have two crops when you formerly had one. The yield increases, of course, are included also. And in some cases you can produce three crops or two and a half crops in one year through the no-tillage technology. And the same thing happened in Argentina where they more than doubled their condition. So they increased from, sorry, they increased from 32 million tons of grain in 14 years to 72 million tons of grain to the introduction of massive mortality in that part of the world. And this slide shows you the current status of mortality adoption worldwide. And you can see that the whole total is estimated at 300 million acres, <coughs> all the numbers here at 11 acres. We have the highest number still in the United States, 65 million acres on our tillage, followed by Argentina and Brazil with 63, followed by Australia with 42 million acres, then comes Canada with 33, and Paraguay with 6 million acres. These are the six countries that have more than 2 million, uh, 6 million acres per being applied by farmers. The rest of the world, that means Europe, Asia, and Africa all together, they have, are having only 22 million acres being applied by these farmers. So you see that no tillage is growing, it's increasing, and, uh, and I'm wondering why some farmers still stick to the old technology when we look at all the advantages that we have discussed before. And this is the impact no tillage has had in South America. No tillage has been the most important technology adopted in Mercosur countries in the last 50 years. And Mercosur countries are composed by Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay. Implementation of no tillage system has reversed the former trend of declining crop crop productivity and led to an economic, economically, ecologically, and socially sustainable form of commercial cropping in South America. The widespread adoption of no tillage shows that this way of farming cannot anymore consider a temporary fashion. Instead, this farming system has established itself <coughs> as a technology that can no longer be ignored by scientists, universities, extension workers, farmers, politicians, donors, as well as machine manufacturers and other agriculture-related industries. <coughs> what are the economics of no -tillage? 
with higher yields over time, lower fertilizer imports, less labor, 66% savings in fuel, reducing tractor use by more than half, doubling life of the tractor, and needing less horsepower per hectare, one does not need to be an economist to find out that there are significant economic advantages of no-till over conventional tillage practices. Influence of no-tillage on the environment. You reduce the CO2 emissions with no tillage, that's positive. Herbicides may be increased or decreased depending on the management on each farm. But in general, we found out that experienced no tillers in Brazil, Argentina, or United States have reduced their herbicide use by about 20% when using permanent no tillage and adequate crop rotation. Water quality is increased. Wildlife birds, especially, are increased. And of course, the main thing is sustainability is finally achieved, or as Jay said, we're getting closer to sustainability using this system. And this is a, a slide that I borrowed from Dr. Donald Frey also present in this uh, come this is this workshop where we show the effect of no tillage on CO2 emissions and he has done measurements all his life now he is retired so on the left we have a picture where we are gaining carbon this is no tillage which sequesters carbon from the atmosphere and puts, puts it into the soil while on the right we are losing carbon and we see that it's like burning the straw because Going in with tillage, we are releasing, we are mineralizing carbon, and then we are losing it to the atmosphere and polluting the atmosphere. This slide shows the impact of tillage systems on the fate of carbon by the year 2020. And it's a work done by Karen and Johnson here in the United States in the year 1993. It shows the situation in the, uh, when the adoption of conservation tillage was about 27% of the country, red is conventional tillage with the plow, minimum tillage, no tillage in the in, in a orange color. And when this study was made in 1993, the United States was releasing about almost 200 million tons of carbon into the atmosphere with minimum tillage that was a, 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 an effect of minimum tillage and no tillage was not very broadly used so there was not, no main, no big effect. The next situation or the next scenario was if, they, if the United States would be adopting 57% of the area in the conservation tillage then we would have, would have an improved situation, but the real improvement comes when 76% of the area would be under conservation tillage, then you would sequester about almost 400 million tons of carbon into the soil, and you would reduce the release of carbon into the atmosphere from almost 200 to about 100 million tons. So this is something that we have to keep in mind when talking about no-till adoption. There is a low carbon project, low carbon agricultural project in Brazil. And in the context of this project, it was estimated that the increase of the current no-till area from 28 million hectares to 40 million hectares in 2020 could represent the removal of 224 million tons of atmospheric carbon from the atmosphere. So there's a lot that can be done in this respect. What is the effect of no-tillage on herbicide? Studies conducted in the United States and Brazil 
have shown that no-till farmers that have overcome the learning phase use about 20% less herbicide per acre of land than the conventional tillage cultivars, as we have said before already. Studies conducted in Paraguay have shown that no herbicide residues, no pesticide residues, could be detected in groundwater nor in surface water in intensive soybean production watershed in this country. So if you look at the rivers in a, in a conventional tillage area, the water looks like this, and you suddenly have clear water when you are using no tillage. And some of you perhaps know the Iguazu Falls. The past, they are on the border, sorry, they are on the border of Brazil and Paraguay and Argentina. And so this is the falls in the past, and here you see the falls like in, in this whole magnificency in the year 2012 when 75% of no-till adoption is already applied in that country. No tillage increase wildlife, especially birds, because they, have, they don't need to walk as much over the ground to find their, the predators. And what's the effect of no tillage on sustainability? In reality, no tillage is the only farming system known today that fully meets the requirements of a, a sustainable agricultural production, even under extreme soil and climatic conditions. But only if quality no tillage is applied, because a low quality no tillage will not achieve the goals of sustainability. And this is again a slide that borrowed from Dr. John Ray Kosky, where he uh, describes the environmental benefits of applying the no tillage technology. And it's increased water holding capacity and water use efficiency, increased cation exchange capacity, reduced soil erosion, improved water quality, improved infiltration, as we said, have seen in, this morning, in the morning session, decreased soil compaction, improved soil tilts and structure, reduced air pollution, reduced fertilizer inputs, as we have seen before, increased soil buffer capacity, increased soil biological activity, we have discussed this, increased nutrient cycling and storage, increased diversity of microflora, increased adoption of uh, absorption of fertilizer, and we have more wildlife in this system. This is a study done in Argentina, and Don Ray Costa should pay attention because we were discussing last night about this slide, this, this effect. The effect of intensification on water use efficiency in soybeans under direct planting at the same crop yield of 3,500 kilos per hectare. So clean fallow shows the lowest water use efficiency. If we use a cover crop, we dramatically increase water use efficiency according this, to this study. And with double cropping, we still increase it more. Despite the fact that we have a higher cropping intensity, and this is in a 20 uh, inch rainfall area, despite the fact that we increase crop intensity, we are increasing water use efficiency. What do we need to, to achieve quality no tillage? We have talked a couple of times about what is quality no tillage. So, in my opinion, we need to, first of all, stop using rotational tillage. 
too many farmers in the United States are using rotation fertility. If I say that we have 70% of or 75% of farmers in South America using no tillage, most of it, at least two thirds, is permanent no tillage. While in the United States, according to CTAC, only 10 to 12% of the no tillage applied in the United States is permanent no tillage. And we need to have permanent no tillage to get the advantage of the system into the ground. We need to retain residues on the soil surface. And this is a condition that residues have to remain there. Several speaker, speakers have also discussed the same point. We need to use low disturbance seeding because Dr. Donald Rykowski has shown very clearly in his research, if we use high disturbance no-till equipment with shanks or tines and move a lot of salt, we will release a lot of CO2 into the atmosphere. So what we need is disk systems that cut the residues easily and will uh, allow us not to have this uh, CO2 going to the atmosphere. And we need to have diverse crop rotation, including cover crops. And whatever it makes it more diverse. Here we have rotations that we use in Paraguay. It's a crop rotation with three crash, crash, cash crops in two years. We start with sun hem, with the yellow flowers, go to wheat, then to soybeans. After soybeans, we have black oats, and then we have corn. Of course, it would be better if we would have a three-year rotation with more crop diversity than this. But this is not a crop rotation, as we said already before. If we are double cropping soybean and wheat, it's not considered a crop rotation in our eyes. It's a monoculture with two crops a year. So there's an interesting concept by Dwayne Beck from South Dakota that advocates the so-called stack rotation. What does it mean? You have two years of wheat, for instance, followed by two years of corn, followed by two years of soybeans. What does it mean? When in the first year there is no diseases because of many years without crop, in the second year diseases and pests start building up, but before they really have achieved momentum, you enter with the next crop. And these pests or diseases are not going to see the same <coughs> old crop for four full years. Only in the fifth year, the same crop will come back to the same level. So this is the interesting con uh, rotation concept that some of you may be interested to follow. Integrating life of production increases diversity. What are the advantages? It improves their operative capacity and the opportunity to cultivate more, most forage crops. It permits the use of soils that are considered marginal. It facilitates restoration of degraded grassland and improvement of natural fields. It permits a better use of soil and forage resources through improved land conditions. So we're improving soil health with the system. Diversity is also achieved using cover crops. And in South America, we use a knife roller to roll it down, as we're doing here. But the knife roller has not sharp knives. It has blunt knives. It has only to smash the stems, impede the water circulation to the plant, and thus killing the plant so we can save on herbicides. The importance of crop rotation for soil quality. Some long-term experiments in Brazil over 19 years have shown that crop rotation systems had more interest on soil stock carbon than tillage systems themselves. 
So this highlights the importance of crop relation. And we need to retain enough crop residues on the soil surface to maintain a permanent, complete cover of the soil, because if this is not the case, we'll have this situation, like in southern Brazil, where people are having monoculture, soybean wheat does not return enough residues to cover the soil enough to have the infiltration rates we need. So we starting having erosion rills in the field, and this is a symptom of bad management and low quality no tillage. If we have erosion and no tillage, it means bad management of this no tillage. We need to do better than that. We need to keep soil covered all the year, the year round in with residues, and this is a picture I took about four weeks ago in, in Paraguay. Uh, it has not rained until the next, the last week, so I don't know how these soybeans are performing now with the drought we had in the last time. This picture shows no tillage into a high residual situation in Brazil. And of course, most of the machines that are used in Brazil almost all have this, they cut the residues. Here we have the machine seeding. And some people that see this for the first time say, well, how are the crops going to germinate? It's impossible to enter this thick mud to germinate. And an operator, the farmer that sent me after two weeks that I took this picture, sent me this picture, and you see the same landscape, the same tree, the same landscape, the same area two weeks later. Soybeans having germinated perfectly after this high residue condition. So if you have the right machine, you will do the job and you have a good germination. The effect of long-term versus rotational tillage, no tillage is shown in these next slides. If we want to reap all the benefits of the no-till system, we need to practice permanent no tillage. And almost all advantages, we have to consider this, almost all advantages of the no-tillage system come from the permanent cover of the soil and only few ones from not tilling the soil. We should always aim at full soil cover permanent no tillage system because everything else is not sustainable. And this slide was, is uh, the gentleman Yuka Sa from Brazil has developed this evolution of continuous still no tillage system. It starts with the initial phase, zero to five years, goes to the transitional phase, five to 10 years, a consolidation phase from 10 to 20 years, and a maintenance phase after 20 years of continuous no tillage. And you will see through these slides that in these five phases, you don't need to take this calendar-wise because if you have good management practice, you perhaps will reach this stage in four years or three years, and instead of having five or ten years for this phase, you have may, may have one year more or one year less, depending on your management. And But the important thing is that we, in this initial phase, we are rebuilding aggregates. The soil is low in organic matter, low in crop residues, and we need especially to re-establish microbial biomass in this phase, because our <coughs> soils that have been tilled and plowed for decades are dead and they have they are lacking this microbial biomass. And in this initial phase, especially in the first two or three years, we will need to apply more nitrogen into the system. You see an improvement in the, in the transition phase. It's getting even better in the consolidation phase 
but the real high conditions, the best conditions in the soil, are achieved after 20 years of continuous tillage and even more. So we have a high accumulation of crop residues in this phase, continuous N and C flux in, this, in the soil. You have a very high carbon content in the soil. You have a higher water holding capacity. You have a high nutrient cycling. That means that you can use less nitrogen and, and phosphorus in your fields. So you, in this phase, after you have reached this phase, you can save on fertilizer. But any tillage performed in the phases two to four will bring us back to the initial phase, to the zero to five years. So we have to keep no tillage going. It's not a good system when you are interrupting it with tillage all the time. And the main reasons for tillage that farmers uh, put forward are soil compaction, phosphorus concentration on soil surface, and lime incorporation into the soil. And from all the 75% of no tillage application in, the, in, in Brazil or in South America, nobody interrupts no tillage to put lime in the soil. It's distributed on the surface. Nobody uses a plow to incorporate phosphorus from its concentrated on the soil surface into the soil. And, uh, and, and everybody is seeking a permanent no tillage condition. And the rotational tillage, farmers will never get to experience the full benefits of the no tillage system. This is how long term no tillage soil looks like, and this is comparing conventional tillage of lab and 10 years no tillage in China at the right. So you see it in the color, you see it in the, in the pores, you see it in the earthworm holes, you see a different soil when you compare a uh, fresh uh, uh, soil that is under conventional tillage and the same soil after 10 years of no tillage. We, if we look at the literature, we see incons inconsistent research results. All too often, conflicting and contradicting no tillage research results are solely and exclusively the result of using dissimilar practices or dissimilar seeding equipment by different researchers. I have noticed that this happens especially here in the United States. You have one scientist saying this, that no tillage sequesters carbon, and the other scientist says, no, no tillage doesn't sequester carbon in the soil. And it is all too often due to even the definition. How does this researcher define or tell how that's the other researcher. They have, they are using the same words, but using different practices. And we have to improve this all over the world. Can this, can this be called no tillage? Fact is that many people do. And here these slides again, I'm borrowing them from Dr. Rykowski, who has done this study, and it shows the soil surface disturbance following low disturbance, at the left, and high disturbance at the right, <coughs> shanko type openers, drills, planting into wheat stubble. On the left again, low disturbance drill, comparing to a high disturbance drill, you see here the shank they run into the ground, but the, the manufacturer calls this an hotel planter. So that's why people say, well, I'm using hotels because the manufacturer showed me an hotel machine. But the conditions are quite different. On the left, the non disturbance soil, a lowest disturbance ceiling in the middle, and on the right, you see the high disturbance no tillage that leaves a lot of bare ground and incorporates a lot of residue. But does, what does this to the soil? This 
uh, slide, slide shows the carbon and water loss from low versus high disturbance spurs. And if you don't disturb, if you don't do anything, would you have the situation on the left? Low carbon and moisture losses. When you have low disturbance nautilic frills, you also have low release of CO2, and you have, but you are, have a little bit more water loss through evaporation. But look at this, if you have a high disturbance drill, you have 10 times more CO2 losses and twice as much moisture losses. And if you are in an area that it doesn't rain that much, you should sink every drop of water into your soil. So this you can achieve using low disturbance non equipment. Final remarks and conclusions. Plowing soil tillage are in opposition to sustainable land use. We have analyzed 33 key parameters, 35 key parameters in relation to their behavior in no tillage systems and compared them to conventional tillage practices. In all but one parameter, no tillage turn out to be a superior system compared to conventional tillage practices. Five parameters were rated more climate or management dependent than tillage system dependent. Research results show that no tillage improves chemical, physical, and biological soil properties, as we have discussed this morning. It reduces time, labor, and fuel for agricultural operations and doubles life of a tractor. Note it significantly improves water quality and reduces CO2 emissions. It is more economic and better for the environment than conventional tillage practices. No tillage is the only farming system known to date that fully meets the requirements of a sustainable agricultural production, even under extreme soil and climate conditions, even topography. The ecosystem is positively, positively influenced by widespread adoption of <coughs> no tillage practices. These should be enough good reasons to convince farmers and decision makers of the urgent need of mainstreaming no tillage agriculture. Also, landlords need to learn about the benefits of no tillage implementation. They should not oppose no tillage adoption because no tillage improves their land. And we have seen that in the United States, a lot of landlords do not allow their tenants to use no tillage because of that trash that they see on their ground. In a no-tillage system, the crop residues, soil quality is substantially improved. This is the cornerstone of a sustainable and economically viable agriculture and livestock production. If you will not remember anything from my presentation, please remember this. If you are a good no-tiller, never use the word dirt for soil. And I didn't talk with Jay yet before preparing the slide. <laughs> never use the word trash for residue. And never use the word exploitation for anything related to agriculture. A mine is exploited. You take everything out, when the hole is left, then you leave the place and go to another place. But you're not exploiting soil or agriculture. And the model of the, of the workshop, it's not just dirt anymore. The Nautilus system has experienced diffusion on more than 300 million acres worldwide in about 70% of cropland by countries like Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay. <coughs> Australia, New Zealand. In the United States, no tillage accounts only for 
of all cropland acres. non tillage management systems improve soil quality for the farmers who use them, and at the same time, they improve the environmental quality for everyone. And this is a farm from Carlos Proveto in Chile, which is a no-till pioneer in that part of the world. It is now high time to convince politicians and the public at large of the positive effects of widespread adoption of no-tillage and the environmental services that this system is offering at virtually no cost to, the, to society. And with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention and we are ready for the next